What's up, peoples? We're here to talk today about the new A24 movie that just came out this past week, Civil War. Spoiler, spoiler review. So everyone, if you haven't seen it, then you might want to watch it before you listen in. Just going to say that now. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Yeah, we're um, we're definitely going to get into it. Um, so, but we we do. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. And uh, remember to come back here and uh, and check out our review. Um, and like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> and like, and subscribe. <laughs> right on. Uh, That's right. Can I ask you a question before we get started? Go ahead. Have you seen Alex Garland's other three movies? Oh, uh, what, which what are they again? Uh, the first one's Ex Machina. I haven't seen that. Second one is uh, Annihilation, which I know you liked. Loved Annihilation. Yeah. And the third one is Men. I don't think you've seen no. that. Is that Ex Machina, Ex Machina is a, a classic at this uh, point. You got to see that. Okay. So this is his fourth film. And also he has said that this is his final film. Just putting that out there. Really? You think he's done, huh? Who knows? Ah, man, this movie. No. Well, this movie has already broken um, A24. A24 24 records, yeah. Yeah. It came out over $25 million this weekend. Um, so... And it's been getting a lot of buzz, which is why we wanted to do the review right up front. Straight up, Peter, what did you think of it? Uh, so I will say I did not really in, uh, like this movie. Wow, really? Um, I I can see the strengths with it, um, but I and I don't I don't think it's an awful movie by any sense. But I think it's highly overrated. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, we, we can get into the, the, the details, but I think in general, uh, a movie that's touting the concept and the moniker of civil war really has not very much to do with the civil war. Uh, so I think that, uh, a little bit of its marketing and hype and the naming and the, uh, that has misled audiences, where really the movie is is more a kind of a road trip with uh, photojournalists, uh, and it doesn't it gives woefully little details. And and I'm I'm okay with a movie being not giving a lot of details about the circumstances, but it's like you have this very interesting concept of a civil war breaking out in the United States, and they give you wo woefully little details about it you don't even know where the main characters stand on it you don't even know how they feel about it and you and it's like you have to kind of glean these details from it and, and i'm not saying i need it to be realistic why texas and california teamed up but it gives you absolutely nothing so with what's left uh with the you know the four photojournalists who are on this this kind of uh aimless adventure there's just not really much there. And like the four characters, I didn't find very, very interesting. I found them pretty inconsistent. And I feel like this movie used provocative imagery and stoking fear and stoking what uh, is going on in America right now with, you know, MAGA cultism. And I feel like uh, it's using provocative imagery with an incredibly shallow uh, premise and incredibly shallow themes and characters. And with that said, the movie doesn't even have, it's not fun. It's not like a big action movie. There's not really, really great action set pieces other than the one at the end. So there's not like there's a great big war battle scenes that you can rest your laurels on. It's it's like it's stoking this idea of being provocative by being actually woefully uh, vapid. And I think the movie will be forgotten in some time. Huh. Uh, with that said, the movie is competently made, has great sound design. There's some visuals that are provocative. There's some good performances. So I'm not I'm not saying it's a disaster. I just think it's massively overhyped and hmm. not something I would. Uh, I, I'm just not on the side of saying it's a great movie. Like and I, like a lot of people are, and I and I think a lot of people who say it's great come a year or two from now will not be talking or thinking about it. What do you yeah. think, Sir? I, I came out of it saying it that was good, but not great. Like in the sense that I think I probably would have enjoyed it more without even that buzz. Um, just because same. It, same. It, if it was a random Netflix watch, I think I would have liked it more. And I have taken that into account in my score. Right. Exactly. But I found it to be pretty just kind of slow moving. And then there'd be spikes. Um, and I thought the spikes were great. Um, like I did. And, and I kind of liked that it was. They, they they didn't give us too much detail and i i 
I think Civil War was just the backdrop, right? So they named the movie Civil War. All the hypes about it being a civil war. The, the imagery is like burning American flags. It's like you got it for it for them to make it a backdrop. It, it just kind of seems like disingenuous <laughs> marketing, in my opinion. You can't argue with that. It's supposed to make you feel like it doesn't it doesn't matter what the setup to the civil war is. All that all that you should be scared of is that this could this isn't too far away. Right. And that's the one element where I don't feel like the movie is uh, societally irresponsible because mm -hmm. to, to stoke people's fear in what uh, a Donald Trump fascism could look like is only a good thing. So, like, if people watch this and Especially they really in an election year fear and an election to get the stoking the fear of, oh, my God, we, we need to not allow fashion to take over in the U.S. Yeah. Because I, I did feel like the president in very indirectly does mimic Donald Trump. Uh, right. They mentioned him, uh, them, him killing journalists. They mentioned him having a third term. They mentioned him firing on his own people. Um, and he also looks a little bit like him. Um, but oh, it I, was definitely oh, him. It was de I, Nick Offerman definitely played Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even though on all the, in all the press, they're kind of saying, no, no, we weren't going that direction. And I feel like almost um, it was a, I know Alex Garland in interviews has said we we didn't want to be political. It's not about that. But when your movie is called Civil War and it takes place in the U.S., to avoid any po politics almost seems um, like you're afraid. And, right. and I'm not saying you need to say, hey, look, this is a right wing president. This, you know, you don't even have to go that direction, but at least some political leaning uh, or not leaning, some political thought. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's like the most apolitical movie that has a very pretending like it has a provocative political theme. Um, but I, I also felt like just within terms of the photojournalists themselves, like I didn't find their characters very interesting or consistent. Uh, I felt the youngest character, her name is Jessie, who joins up with them, is yeah. annoying and stupid and stupid. is the only reason that people on their side die. Right. So... And I felt like uh, Kirsten Dunst's character, who was, she, she did a great performance, but her turn at the very end were instantly this. She was crying? Well, she's she's so hardened the whole movie. And, yeah, and, yeah. And then she falls to pieces. And, and she's bonding with this younger character, Jesse, almost like almost like there's their bond, which feels not earned or, or very strong. They have that pep talk by the water right before the final DC battle. Mm -hmm. and you kind of feel like they're bonding. You feel like Kirsten Dunst has the strength, and then the next battle scene, she's completely falling apart. Right. And she dies in the most ridiculously melodramatic and that stupid was, way. It was awful. That really... Awful, awful, that, awful. Like, I was... Yeah. I was, like, I, if you're going to gonna push someone out of the way uh, of oncoming bullets, you don't push them and stand there. You, like, you dive, dive with them. them. Yeah, you, um, you and then she just sits there and takes pictures of her dying. I was like, This that, is crazy. This is actually crazy. It was two things in a row. Yeah, it was no three because, like, they kind of teased that someone was gonna get shot when from because she would like Kirsten Dunst would run ac across the hall, right? That quick, like, take the photo and 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 she did it again. And so then you kind of knew that was how someone was gonna go, and then. So the kid doing it though, but then just stopping the. I'm, I'm like, okay, that's gonna happen. Then Kirsten Dunn's coming, pushing her out of the way, and not like pushing and falling on top of her, just hanging out there. I'm like, wow. And yeah. then the icing on the cake was when the kid just instead of like being like, oh my god, what have I done? No, takes the. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. I know. <laughs> Pretty much the apex climax moment of the movie. It was. Right woefully unearned it just felt like it was thrown in there just because right and I, I i've seen online people say how you know when she looks back at the body and they don't grieve it's almost like the young girl has finally become hardened which is an interesting perspective but i think would have been would have been more interesting is if the young character gets shot up and killed right and it's kirsten dunce's character lee that looks at the body and doesn't care and moves on to the final picture because it would have shown that she really is hardened by this Right. And everything we've led to believe that she's warming up. No, she's just a hardened photojournalist and war is cold. War is hard. Right. Um, and that the photo, this photo op was more important to this cat than it was to grieve over someone young. And it would have been more, more devastating. It just felt like this, 
it just felt like obvious and also badly written and also melodramatic and cringy. And uh, I think my ending, I would have given it a full point higher in my score. <laughs> they got my ending. That was a, that is a better ending. I like that. I also don't really understand why Kirsten Dunst just fell to pieces at the Me moment. neither. Like I Me didn't neither. really, there was nothing that really indicated like that that was going to happen. They literally were in life or death situations already. And she kept her cool. And like, at this point, like I was like, wait, why is she the one literally falling to pieces right now? I do not. Especially get when the scene before the yeah. very scene before we see her giving the pep talk about how the, the, the larger older man, like he went the way he wanted to go and right. it was all pep, pep talk. And you see the, uh, what's the other guy's name? The low rent Pedro Pascal actor. Yeah. He, he's having yeah, a break. From Narcos. The Narcos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. He you just see that it should have been it should have been Pedro Pascal if they had higher budget. Let's be honest. <laughs> right. He's great. He actually was great, but he's, great. he's a mental breakdown. He's drinking. He's losing it. And then the very next scene, they're just in the middle of battle, and and it's like a total inconsistent role reversal. Um, right. He becomes the strong one, and even at the end, when he finally gets to the pre- when he finally when he finally gets in there. And I'm like, oh wait, he yeah, he wanted to get that quote. That was the, re- the real reason he wanted. To- I forgot about that. I, and you know, the other thing too, even that even that I, moment where he's just like, wait, don't don't do it. I need a quote. I mean, I didn't I didn't hate that little moment at the ending of like that'll do, and then they shoot him. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But um, it almost feels like they turn the ending at the very last 15 minutes of the movie. All of a sudden, it's, it, it, they're kind of like, oh, the Western forces are the good guys. Right. And the United forces are the bad guys and the president's the big bad. And like, we got to kill him. And it's just kind of like, what? Like that you didn't establish any of this. <laughs> and you also um, are leading me to believe that they're on this road trip to have an interview with him. Like, it seems right. like based on what happens at the ending, yeah. their, their mission statement at the beginning to have an interview with him seems asinine. Right. Um, it seems like they're just, it's a suicide mission because there's no way they're going to get in there. So what was, what is the plan, and what do you hope to get from this guy? Like, what? <laughs> it didn't yeah, like, make maybe sense. if they had like an an interview set up, and there was like an internal conflict about right. it, and they talked about it throughout, but they don't. Right. Uh, I also found, um, you know, certain moments like there's that moment everyone's talking about where they're driving through the, the fire, the forest fire, and there's the embers everywhere. It just seems like a, an excuse for for good visuals. And I, something about that seemed like, well, where'd the, where'd the fire start? Like, why are they driving through a forest fire? Like, who's burning these trees, random trees down? Like, I, it just like it just seemed like an excuse for c- cinematic visuals. And right. I feel like a lot of the movie had this kind of, um, like I said, provocative visuals that were hollow. Right. And I, I just walk away being like, what was I to take from that? Vote blue. Vote blue. That's what. I, that's all I heard. In my head. Vote a blue. little bit. <laughs> um, the other issue I have with it too is that it's even as a war film, a lot of the war scenes don't seem. You know, I know a twenty four. This is their biggest budget movie, I think, but still, they're not. They're not a massive studio that can make two hundred million dollar movies. Right. But you just never got a sense of any real war scenes. They they all feel like these kind of five on five Call of Duty skirmishes that these people are just instantly a part of. You don't know how they walked into these battles. They're like, oh, look, there's a war over there. Let's go to the front line tomorrow. Oh, yeah, hoorah. Then the next day, they're just kind of already already there with people. And you're just like, well, who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? And then they just kind of assassinate these people and they're they're laughing and joking. And I'm like, I don't get what I'm supposed to feel here. This just feels like random provocative imagery. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with a lot of that. I mean... It is what it is. Nothing. It's not going to work for everybody. I I think the thing that annoyed me the most was that they were just like when when they would go into the war zones. It's as if like just saying you were press. They're like, oh, okay, no worries. And then they would like, the, even the soldiers would like be like, get behind me and stuff. And I'm like, I don't buy that. This that these these press these press people are just not slick enough. I don't think if the world was in that, I I just don't believe any of that would happen. It was seems. Yeah. And just the ending where it's like, let's rush into the White House. He's still there. Okay, yeah. but it's it's like a five on five. Like, where's the rest of the military? And and also, like, why is the president not in a bunker or in a uh, safe room? Like, he's just chilling in the Oval Office. Like, right. it's just a little bit. The more I think about it, the more dumb it gets. Definitely I'm, not. I'm, definitely not movie of the year. Definitely not better than no. June, which is what I kind of was going into it with. 
Um, so yeah, very hyped. And I will on the positive note, though, I will say again, some some provocative visuals that are that are well visually and the sound design was was fairly good. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets a sound design nomination. Um, that's probably the only nomination I think it deserves. And I think that final battle scene in Washington, D.C. was uh, there's some visuals there that were really visceral and uh, captivating. And so it, it's not a complete flop. And I think had the name had the movie not had the hype. Had it been um, not named Civil War and stoking into this Civil War concept, and it had just been some Netflix movie that I pressed play on, I would have found it enjoyable. Like it's, I found it paced relatively well. The production value is there. It's got a great cast. Um, but I just feel a little misled by the marketing. Um, and, you know, I just, I didn't realize it was going to be just like four kind of lame journalists on a road trip. I thought we were going to see more of a wide picture of the civil war. Like, you know, they advertise with Jesse Plemons and right. uh, Nick, Offerman. Uh, Nick Offerman. Like they're not even really in the movie. Yeah. Um, and it definitely yeah. felt like I, I definitely was surprised um, that they stuck with just this four foursome group. Like the way it started, I, I figured they would shift from stories to stories throughout. Like, and I thought yeah, yeah. when Jesse Plemons didn't show up in the first, like, hour i'm like oh so this is just the movie and he's just gonna be in a scene and um and he was and that was a great scene jesse Plemons' scene was, was dope that was the highlight of the movie yeah and and i definitely did you know it did, definitely did grip me uh the whole the movie like i said like like a few times i i definitely screamed in the movie i wasn't bored let's put it that no. way i was I wasn't bored yeah i just felt like some of the again like i it almost felt just distasteful that, that's the word I would put, like distasteful to use these provocative visuals for such an incredibly hollow uh, theme and characters. Right. Uh, so yeah. overall, I'd say disappointing. But I mean, if you had seen Men, you would. Men was not a great movie, in my opinion. So I didn't come into this. I kind of came into this with a little bit of a Alex Garland thing. But I saw the reviews. I saw the hype. And I'm like, oh, man, maybe this is going to be an excellent movie. Um, I think it should have been called something like photojournalists or something. <laughs> Like something well, I was my friend Chris came out of it and he was like, I think they should have called it hard press. And I was like, Yeah, give it a cool title. Um yeah, but just marketing it as the Civil War movie. Right. Uh you it, you know, and it makes me feel like um it makes me harken back to like movies like Deep Impact or Independence Day that were bold enough to tell a story with an ensemble. Right. I'm saying no, there's people in this part of the country, there's people in this part of the country, there's people, there's presidents here. Like it gives such a more well-rounded view of an incident. And it almost feels like a, I don't want to say lazy, but it feels like a easier way to go where it's like, no, we're just going to follow people in their car driving through the States and right. driving by provocative visuals that we've already seen in the last of us and every zombie movie and like post-apocalyptic pornography True. Um, without the fun, <laughs> without the fun, without the fun. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah well i mean so what would you give it out of 10 so out of 10 I, i'm probably leaning on a, a four whoa uh, yeah <laughs> I, I mean I, I wow. had it been marketed a bit differently maybe a very soft five which right. would put it right at average so i'm not going to say don't watch it it's not an awful film right but if if it was that five out of ten that was a thumb up or a thumb down i'd probably go thumb down so it'd be a, let me just say it's a soft five okay <laughs> <laughs> how about you serene no erection on that one just a soft five, dude. Soft five. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean if we were doing point scale i'd probably do a 4.5 wow yeah well i mean we are doing a point scale so 4.5 is it, it? 4.5 is where i would land i mean I, like i would just watch it the other day sometimes my scores can go up and down over time sure. uh, i was teetering between a four and a five uh since i watched it and i think I'm pretty solidified on a 4.5. Okay, so I see your your soft 4.5, and uh, to me, I, to me, that's it was a hard seven. Uh, okay, I, that's a good yeah. score. In my, in my mind, that's a really good score. Yeah, no, it was a good score. I I thought it was it was good, um, like and not great. And I think the reasons it weren't wasn't great. There were small things. They weren't like the. It wasn't like the movie as a whole. I thought to me like. Those mo those scenes that I, that were good, I, I thought were really good. As a journalist myself, like it definitely made me think about um our role, and uh, I kind of put myself there in those moments a little bit more, and being like, 
oh my god like could i just leave that guy hanging at the gas station for for lloyd for um for looting like could i i don't know if i could do that like and 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 so it challenged a lot of the things in my own mind about like our role as journalists and um and it scared me enough in terms of like whoa that is not too far off it was um something it was just chilling and so and and i, I love kirsten dunst uh, i thought Jeff, jesse Bowman's was great and so um i don't think it was as good as it should have been um but that's just my opinion i mean like it it was a good night at the it was a good thursday night at the movies and everybody left with something to say so it didn't make me feel nothing like you said like it wasn't i wasn't bored <laughs> I just wonder, Strain, uh, by the end of this year or early next year, will it be part of the conversation for awards? Will it be part of the conversation of the top movies of the year? I don't I don't know if it, if it will be. Um, I feel like over time, people will realize there's just not much to say about it, and there's just not much of a reason to rewatch it. But I could be wrong. Maybe I'll come around. That's the beauty of movies. That's the beauty of movies. Well, sound, strong design, definitely, like... Oh it yeah, was a great theater watch. My God, yeah. And and hey, if Trump gets elected, gets reelected, and then and then maybe it's a true story. Hey, let's talk more. Then the movie should have had the very end a thing that said "register to vote." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, all right. Well, well. Thanks for uh, for weighing in. And uh, hey, if uh, you guys have seen Civil War, please. Let us know in the comments. What did you think? Was it a soft four point five for you too, or was it a a hard seven? Um, because I mean, the nice thing about this movie is I think a lot of people will come out with different scores. It's top, absolutely up, up to say. Thanks so much for watching, you guys, um, and we'll catch you next time for Serene, Peter, Screen Guys out. You get more out of life when you go out to a movie.